The Tempest Cleric. An electrifying build where enemies will look at you but won't dare to come close. But if their stupidity overshadows the logic, they will be shocked. This build here is just an amazing fun lighting damage creation where we use plenty of items whose main purpose is to create a synergy with the lighting spells and features of the Tempest Cleric. We electrify water and if there is none, we make it rain and induce it with our own bane. We gather lighting charges which will give us the ability to deal even more damage to the enemies. That's basically the build. Just amazing and fun to use and getting reliable pretty fast since basically all the needed items are in Act 1. So with that said, just let's get in and build this thing. Starting right off in the character creation. So we go of course with a custom character. And for the race, as always, choose whatever you want to play because it is the least important part in this whole build. But if you want to go after a specific part, I would recommend you to either go with the elf or the half elf with either of them choosing the woods elf subclass for the additional movement speed. And the second part which is really nice for this one here, we get the race feature of the fee ancestry, where we have advantage on saving throws against being charmed and magic can't put us to sleep, which is pretty nice because we will standing right in the middle of enemies and they will probably try to charm or put us to sleep at some points and with this one this is just a nice little add-on. Otherwise as always nice to use is the Gefianke because later on we get the Misty Zap spell and the Psionic Jump which is just a nice overall spell to have. But as I said just pick whatever you want. I will go with the Wood Elf for this build here. So as for the class, we of course are choosing the Cleric class because it is a Cleric build and I think this is the best way to start. Because right off the bat we can choose our subdomain which will be the Tempest domain. Because with this, first off we get our subclass feature which is the first nice thing, the Wrath of the Storm. Because with this one, when we are getting attacked, we can potentially deal 2 to 6 in lighting damage and on a failed saving throw we deal half of 2 to 6 in thunder damage. So it is just a nice reaction when we are getting attacked to get in some additional lighting damage for this build. Then for the spells we also get the thunder wave which is amazing because when we are standing in our shocking area and enemies come too close we can just thunder wave them away and they have to come close again and they are getting shocked again with the electrified water. Just amazing for this. Then for the cantrips, I basically always go with the same three when I play a cleric. The resistance, because we get just more resistant to spell effects and conditions. Then the guidance, just one of the best cantrips in the whole game because we gain a 1d4 bonus to ability checks outside and inside of battle, just amazing to have. Then the sacred flame, just a really nice cantrip for that early game damage if we used all our spell slots. It's just our main damage source except our spells. Then for the deity, just pick whatever you want for the role playing purpose. Then for the background you can of course choose whatever you want which is fitting you best and the playstyle you want to go through but otherwise I will probably go with Outlander because we get the athletics bonus here which is just nice for, for some of the athletic checks in the game and second off the survival which goes on wisdom which is just nice to have. But as I said, just pick whatever background you want. Then if we go to the abilities, the main thing we want here is Wisdom. We want this all the way to 17 because with Wisdom we pump up our spell casting ability for this class. <clears throat> then as a second I would just pump up constitution to 16 and dexterity to 15. Because constitution is important just for our saving throws, for our concentration spells and of course for our higher hit points. But we will use some concentration spells so it's quite important that we succeed in those. But of course you can just turn this around and give dexterity 16 if for example you want a higher initiative early on in the game and a higher armor class. So it just depends because at level 4 we will get our first feat and we will just improve either dexterity or constitution to 16 and wisdom to 18. So, so just pick what you rather want here. Then for our skills, you can basically choose whatever you want here. I will go with Persuasion, so we have a little bit here, since it is our main character, and a little bit of insight. You could of course go with Medicine, Religion and History if you want, but I don't think it's the most important decision here, so just pick whatever you want. Then if we look at our prepared spells, you, first off, you don't have to prepare any spells because you can do this in game. 
So you don't have to choose here the spells because you will know every little spell here and you can just choose in game which you want to use. But to start a game I think Guiding Bolt is just a must have spell because it deals nice damage and it gives you an advantage on the next attack roll. Then Shield of Faith is also just a nice spell to have because it increases our armor class by 2. Then you could also just go with Bless which is an amazing spell. But if you for example have someone else which has Bless you don't have to use it. Healing Word is just a must take because it is First off a healing spell which works from a distance and it works as a bonus action so you don't have, your, have to use your main action for this. Then then spells like command or as I said bless you could just use them. I will just go with command because I already have my concentration spell here and I don't need all of the concentration spells equipped right now. I can just swap them out if I want to. But for the first level it's not that important. That's basically it for the character creation. Then for the leveling at level 2. We will get our first amazing feature, the Destructive Wrath. With this one here, if we roll thunder or lightning damage, we can use our channel divinity to deal maximum damage instead. So if we use a lightning spell, we can just make sure that we deal the max amount of damage possible with this spell. So absolutely amazing feature. And of course we get a level 1 spell slot and a general divinity charge because otherwise we couldn't use this here. Then we also can prepare one more spell. So just choose whatever you want and let's continue the leveling. Then at level 3 we don't have to choose anything, we get a level 1 and level 2 spell slot unlocked and we get some level 2 spells here and, and some class spells like the Shatter and the Gust of Wind. As with every level up in this build you can just choose them in game, you don't have to use choose them here. But what I would recommend that at some point you will need the water spell. It just, I mean, it depends on when you are getting your equipment and when you're making use of the water. But I think rather soon you will have some part of the equipment or if you just go after everyone, then it is probably time to get the water spell. And of course the 8 spell, which is just an amazing spell to have because it increases your maximum health by 5 hit points. Then at level 4 we can choose our next cantrip where you can just pick whatever you want. I will just choose to produce flame. It's not that important here. But the main important part here is the first feed we get. And with this one here we will just, as I already mentioned in the character creation, increase our dexterity to 16 and our wisdom to 18. And that's it. That's the whole thing with level 4. Let's get going. At level 5 we get a level 3 spell slot which is amazing and a bunch of different level 3 spells and important the call of lightning spell which is absolutely amazing because with this one here we can deal damage to all targets within the range and then for 10 turns we can cast the spell again without expanding a spell slot as long as we can hold our concentration. So this is absolutely amazing because if we manage to hold our concentration we can just cast this spell without using any of our spell slots for as long as we want. So just absolutely amazing spell to have. You will probably use this one right away. Then let's get going. Then at level 6, this is basically where we got all the things we need. Because we get another channel divinity charge, so we can use our destructive wrath two times, which is absolutely amazing because we can deal two times maximum damage per short or long rest. So basically all the time, because a short rest is just easy to do, and long rest you will also long rest quite a lot. But the subclass feature, Thunderbolt Strike. When we deal lightning or thunder damage to a creature that is large or smaller, we can also push it up to 3 meter, which is also just nice, because we can just make sure that they don't come too close to us, if they are of course large or smaller. Then of course, again, prepare the spells. Then after level 6 you have two options, or rather you would have had an option earlier on because what I would like with this build is to just go one level into the sorcerer because there. First off we can pick some cantrips we want to use like for example the shocking grasp which is just amazing. So at level 7 there's one thing I would always like to do, I mean you can choose if you want to do it or not, but I would like to dip one level into the sorcerer class because there. We can choose the Storm Sorcery class and with this one here, after we cast level 1 spell or higher, we can fly as a bonus action. And 
until the end of turn without receiving opportunity attacks, which is just amazing if we cast something and maybe enemies are too close, we can just reposition ourselves and not getting attacked while doing this. So it's just a nice little feature to have. The second part here you could also do, which I'm kind of torn between, you could also just dip into the Storm Sorcery class at level 2 already, because then you have one level in Cleric and one in Storm Sorcery and they can use this one here too. But the problem is you will get all these Cleric features just a level later while playing, so you just have to decide if it's worth it that you have this bonus here and the can't represent spells. I could say that both ways are just fine, because with the Sorcerer class we just get 4 cantrips and for example the Shocking Grasp, which is just amazing because it fits this build. Then we also get for example the Mage Hand, which is all also amazing to have in general. Then for the spells there's for example the Twitch Bolt which is also a lightning spell. So it just depends on how you want to play it. But you could also just for example get some utility spells like Disguise Self or Featherfall. But it just depends when you will multi-class if you're doing it early on in the game or later on. So just decide what you rather want to do. I think both ways are just fine. But then for the rest of the levels I would just keep on leveling the cleric and finish this build off with it. And then for the last levels you will just get some more spell slots, a few more spells you can use however you want because we have the main thing done which this build needs. So then let's go over the gear. I will go over all the items you get as early as in Act 1 and which are a must have for this build. Then I have two more or three more additional items which you don't have because you will get them a little bit later. You get them Act 2 but I'll tell you which one they are. The first one, Act 1 here, the Lifebringer. When the wearer gains lightning charges they also gain free temporary hit points. Just amazing to have because we will gain lightning charges all the time so we gain temporary hit points all the time. Then the Jolty West where we take one less slashing damage but that's not the main important part here. Countershock is the main important part. When the wearer takes damage while having lightning charges the attacker must succeed a dexterity saving throw or become shocked. So it's just an amazing additional thing for this build. Then the Sparkle Hands, which is also just nice to have because on a hit with an unarmed attack the wearer gains two lightning charges. I mean we won't do that many unarmed attacks but you could of course if you want. And by the way if you throw your weapon it counts as an unarmed attack so there is some way to get that into the build. But Second off, the effective transmitter. While imbued with lighting charges, attacks against metal constructs and foes wearing metal armor gain advantage, which is amazing because there are a lot of them in the game. Then, absolutely must have the water sparkles because when the wearer stands in water during combat, it becomes electrified. And this is what we are gonna do in this build. Water Sparks. If the wearer starts the turn on an electrified surface, they gain free lightning charges. So basically, we gain every turn some additional lightning charges. So absolutely amazing boots. Then next off, the Blast Pendant. And with this one, we get Lightning Blast. And this one here, we can focus our electricity to strengthen our next lightning spell or cantrip. And the next lightning spell or cantrip deals additional lightning damage equal to your remaining lightning charges. And on hit, all of your lightning charges are consumed. So also just a nice thing to have. You can use this if you want. If not, then not. But I think it's just a nice additional thing. Then the Sparks War. Where? We can't be electrocuted, which is important because we are the electrifiers and we want to be electrocuted ourselves. And next off, grant resistance to lightning damage, also just nice to have. Then for our weapon, we are gonna use the spell Sparkler, where when we deal damage with a spell or cantrip, we gain two additional charges. So basically, we will have every turn at least 5 charges where we deal that additional 1d8 lightning damage from our lightning charges, which is just absolutely amazing. So the next thing, the real spark is Sparks Wall, which is a shield. It gives us plus 2 armor class, which is nice, but we also get the lightning aura spell, where we can consume 3 lightning charges and release a blast of electric electricity that damages and jolts nearby enemies. Then for the two items which you only get in Act 2 would be the Cloak of Protection where you get one, plus 1 to armor class and plus 1 to saving throws. I think it's just nice to have because we have a higher defense and a higher possibility to succeed in our saving throws. So just amazing to have. Then 
The second one would be the Whispering Promise, where when we heal a creature, we gain 1d4 bonus to attack rolls and saving throws for 2 turns. So I think this is just absolutely amazing because after all, we are still a cleric and we are gonna heal some of our party members or ourselves and if we do, we just get a huge bonus without using, for example, a bless spell or something else. We just get this for free as addition with this ring. So I think this is just a nice thing to have. And that are all the items in this build. So let's have a look at this build in action. So first off, there are two situations. First, if you would stand in an area where water is already there, you could just run in. But since here everything is dry, we are gonna produce our water ourselves. And for this, just consider that if you use this in different spell slots, then the area can changes pretty much. I will just use a level 4 spell set to make a huge area underwater. And as you can see, everything is shocking. You can of course also, if you know that there is a fight coming, do the water spell before the initiative so you don't use your main action for this. And other than that, we are just gonna stand in the electrified area. The enemies, every time it is their turn, they will get electrified. We can use our spells, we can use destructive wrath to deal maximum damage, we can use our we can even use our reactions to deal an additional lightning damage. We can we can do so many things that if they're really coming close to us, then we just use a spell and then fly with our bonus action to another area and they just have to come to us and but they will always get shocked so that's the main thing here it's just an i think it's just a really fun build to at least try out and that's basically it just shock your way into this world through the enemies and until you reach your goal so that was it that's basically everything you need to know if you have any thoughts about getting this even better or just alternatives or maybe a multi-classing idea how this could be even better tell me otherwise thank you for watching and have a nice day and bye